Hello everyone and welcome to All Things Air Quality. In this video, I'll be showing you how we calculate normalized flow rate. The equation we'll be using is as follows. I will explain how to use this equation as we go along. Just a brief overview of what normal and standard refers to in terms of flow or more specifically volumetric flow. Normal and standard refers to normal conditions of temperature and pressure or the flow rate at standard conditions of temperature and pressure. Now what exactly standard and normal means in this case can vary depending on the application and the field or discipline that you are working in. To give you some idea of the various definitions of standard and normal that has been defined and terms are sometimes used interchangeably, here is a list of the different conditions that have been defined. Now where I'm from we typically work with the EPA definition which is 25 degrees Celsius and 101.325 kilopascal and we call that normal conditions. IUPAC refers to standard temperature and pressure as 0 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascal. So whenever you work with normal or standard flow or you are requested to determine normal or standard flow rate, I suggest you verify against the standard that you are working in and the region and application, which conditions are being referred to. Okay, so now for the calculation. The question we want to answer is how do we convert volumetric flow between different conditions of temperature and pressure? And this is where our good friend value gas flow comes into play. It shows the relationship between volume or volumetric flow, pressure and temperature. We know that we are going to be working with at least two different sets of conditions. So using this relation over here, we know that for both sets of conditions, that relationship will be true. So what that means for condition one is that the pressure at condition one times the volumetric flow at condition one is equal to the molar mass, which will stay constant because we are not changing that when we change between conditions, R, which is a constant, and the temperature at that condition. And the same can be said for condition two. For our two conditions, we know that the ideal gas law holds, and therefore P1, V1 equals NRT1, and the same can be said for the second set of conditions. Now, because N and R are the same in these two equations, we can set them equal to each other. In R, if we take it, divide T1 or take T1 over, if we take a T2 over here, we can say NR equals B1, V1 over T1 equals B2, V2 over T2. And this gives us our fundamental relationship. From here, if we simplify the equation to get the volumetric flow or the volume on the one side, we get our relationship over here. And this is what we will be using to convert between normalized flow. Because whether it's a volume, like a written year, or a volumetric flow rate, if I will make that a volumetric flow and that a volumetric flow, this equation will hold true. Okay, let's run through a quick example. Suppose we have a volumetric flow rate of 200 cubic meters an hour, 200 degrees Celsius stack, 90 kilopascals in the stack. Convert this to standard conditions of 0 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascal. We will be using our relationship that we just derived. V1 will be our normal condition that we'll be calculating. V2 will be the condition that we measured, as well as P2 and T2. P1 will be 100 kilopascal and T1 will be 0 degrees Celsius. But as this comes from the ideal gas law, T1 and T2 needs to be in Kelvin. Okay, so how this will look, we substitute in our values. I'm going to call it Vs for standard conditions. We're going to have 200, but we're going to be multiplying with P2, which is now a condition at which we measured, 90. Let's make this nice and big for us. And we're going to multiply that by T1, which is our 0 degrees Celsius, the condition that we are normalizing to. And let me quickly draw in here, yeah, this might be quickest. We will be dividing that by P1, which is our normal condition of 100 kilopascal, and T2, which is our measurement, which is 200 degrees Celsius, which is 473 Kelvin. And that will give us an answer of 103.9 cubic meters an hour. And let's just stop for a second to think about this answer. 
So what we calculated, we calculated the conditions at a lower temperature and a slightly higher pressure. Now with a gas, as we know from the ideal gas law, let me throw that up here. If the pressure is increasing, the volume should be decreasing. And if the temperature is decreasing, so should the volume. In this case, both the temperature has decreased and the pressure has increased. Therefore, the velocity should have decreased. And that is exactly what we are seeing over here. The standard volume is lower than our measured volume. And in stack testing, this will be the case for most standards and normal conditions that are defined out there because we typically work at somewhat higher temperatures and we very rarely sample from anything that's under significant pressure. Okay, so that is how you normalize flow rates. This will also work for velocities because if you think about it, to get a velocity from a volumetric flow rate, you simply divide by the area and the area of a stack is not affected by the conditions at which you measure it. So therefore, this relationship remains true. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will answer them.